In this video, we're going to learn how to initialize a vector with user input in C++. The first thing we'll do is include the vector library so that we can create and use vectors. In our first version of the program, we'll prompt the user for the total number of elements. So we'll say C out and we'll have number of elements colon. We'll create a variable called total and we'll initialize it to zero. But we'll use cin and store the number of elements entered into the total variable. We'll then declare a vector with this number of elements. So we'll say vector int data total. So here we've created a vector to store int values called data. And initially it's going to have total size. Next we'll create a loop to prompt the user for each element's value in this vector. So we'll have for int i is equal to zero, i is less than total, i plus plus. And we're going to prompt the user to enter in each individual vector element value. So we'll output element and then the index of this element for which the input is being provided. Then we'll have cn and we'll store into that element of the vector, the value that the user enters. So what's going on here is that our loop is using a counter variable i to go through each element of this vector. i is gonna be incremented from zero up until total by one. We're gonna output that the user is about to set the element at index i's value. So we're prompting the user to let them know you're about to set this element with this index. Then we take their input and we use it to set that element's value at that index, i. So that will set all the vector values. Now we can just output the vector values to verify that they were set correctly. So we'll use a range-based for loop to output each element in this vector. We'll say for auto element in the data vector, output the element followed by a space and we'll output an inline after all the elements. So we can save our program and run it and give it a test. And for the number of elements, we'll put in, let's say, eight. I'll have for element zero, two, for element one, four, then six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, and we get the correct values here when we output the vector elements afterwards. So that's one way of doing it. With this approach, we're assuming that the total number of elements to be initialized is known in advance of asking for those element values. But vectors in C++ can grow in size dynamically. There's no need to have a size known before we start accepting user input to set element values. We could use what's called a sentinel value instead where at some point, if the user enters a special value, then we stop asking for element values. But until then, we just keep on accepting user input and creating more elements in our vector. So let's try this approach. We'll comment out this code above. And then here, we'll declare a vector differently. We'll declare a vector to store ints, but this time the vector is going to have no initial size provided. We'll make a loop that's going to run potentially forever. We say that it's indefinite in terms of how many times it's going to execute. What we're going to do is prompt the user to enter in each element value. We'll have a counter variable to keep track of which element value is being entered. We'll have int i is equal to zero. And then we can prompt the user to let them know the index of the element for which they're entering a value. So I'll say C out element at index i followed by a colon. And we'll increment i so that with each loop iteration, i reflects the index of the element that's being set. We'll also declare a variable called value to store each value that the user enters. So we'll say int value is equal to zero. Next we'll use cin to actually store each value entered into the value variable. So we'll say cn, and we'll store what's entered into the value variable. Next, we'll use the pushback vector method to add this value as the next element 
of the vector. We're going to say that negative one is going to be our special sentinel value that's going to signify the end of user input. We'll tell the user what that value is. So we'll say C out, enter negative one to complete input, followed by an end line. And after the user's entered the value, we're going to check to see if it's the special sentinel value. If it is negative one, we're going to use break to stop the loop. So we'll say if the value is equal to negative one, then break to stop the loop. And we can print out the vector elements the same as we did before. So we'll save and compile and run our program. And then it tells me that I can enter negative one to complete input. And I'm currently entering the value for element zero. I'll put in 10 for element zero, 20 for element one, 30 for element two, and then 40 for element three. And then I'll enter a negative one to complete the user input. And we get a vector with four elements, 10, 20, 30, and 40. So this is how we can use user input to initialize a vector in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.